Welcome to a lesson on building generating functions for sequences using the technique of differencing. We have seen how to find generating functions from one divided by the quantity one minus x using multiplication, substitution, addition, and differentiation. To use each of these, we must notice a way to transform the sequence of ones into a desired sequence because the generating function of the sequence of ones is one divided by the quantity one minus x. This is not always easy it's also not really the way we have analyzed sequences. One thing we have considered often is the sequence of differences between terms of a sequence. This will turn out to be helpful in finding and generating functions as well. The sequence of differences is often simpler than the original sequence. So if we know a generating function for the differences, we would like to use this to find a generating function for the original sequence. Let's consider the sequence two, four, 10, 28, 82, and so on. Recall from the previous lesson, we already know the generating function can be found by summing the generating functions for the sequence of ones and the sequence one, three, nine, 27, and so on. In this lesson, we'll use the method of differencing to hopefully get the same generating function. And now let's consider the sequence of first differences, which is two, six, 18, 54, and so on. Notice we subtract two from four to get two, we subtract four from 10 to get six, we subtract 10 from 28 to get 18, and so on. From here, notice the generating function for two, six, 18, 54, and so on is equal to two times the generating function for the sequence one, three, nine, 27, and so on, which gives us two divided by the quantity one minus three x for the generating function for the sequence of first differences. From here, notice, if we subtract term by term the sequence zero, two, four, 10, 28, and so on, from the given sequence two, four, 10, 28, and so on, we have two minus two, which is two, four minus two, which is two, 10 minus four, which is six, 28 minus 10, which is 18, and so on. Notice this sequence of differences is not quite the same as the sequence of first differences, but it will work. So now we'll use the method of multiply, shift, and subtract to hopefully determine the generating function for the given sequence. So we first let A equal the generating series for the given function. This gives us A equals two plus four X plus 10 X squared plus 28 X cubed and so on. Now you multiply both sides of this equation by X. When multiplying both sides of the equation by X, notice this does give us the sequence zero, two, four, 10, 28, 82, the sequence we want to subtract from the given sequence to get the sequence that resembles the sequence of first differences. So again, we multiply both sides of the equation by x. Because there's no constant term when multiplying by x, the constant term is zero, and then we subtract the two equations. Subtracting on the left, we have a minus xa, which can be factored into the quantity one minus x times a. On the right subtracting, we have two minus zero, which is two, plus four x minus two x, which is two x, plus 10 x squared minus four x squared, which is six x squared, and so on. And now looking at the right side of the equation, notice how we do have the generating series for the sequence that resembles the sequence of first differences, which is the sequence two, two, six, 18, 54, and so on. From here, if we focus on the part of the series that does resemble the exact sequence of first differences, meaning this part of the series where we ignore the constant of two for a moment, this series does resemble the series that would generate the actual sequence of first differences. But notice in this generating series, the first term is two X and therefore the sequence would be zero, two, six, 18, 54, and so on. And therefore the generating function for this part of the series on the right side of the equation, it's not two divided by the quantity one minus three x, it's two x divided by the quantity one minus three x. So now we can perform a substitution and we have the equation, the quantity one minus x times a equals two plus the generating function two x divided by the quantity one minus three x. And now to find the generating function for the given sequence, we solve for a. To solve for a, we multiply both sides of the equation by one divided by the quantity one minus x. On the right side of the equation, we distribute, which gives us two divided by the quantity one minus x plus two x 
divided by the product of one minus x and one minus three x. This is a generating function for the given sequence. Now you might be saying, wait a minute, that's not the same generating function we found in the last lesson, and you're right, it's not, but it is equivalent. To show that it's equivalent, we would have to add these two fractions together and then perform partial fraction decomposition. And I'll go ahead and show that work now. Again, the first step would be to add the two fractions together by obtaining a common denominator. That gives us the quantity two minus four x divided by the product of one minus x and one minus three x. And now we'd have to perform partial fraction decomposition. And here's all the work. Setting this up and solving for a and b, we do get a equals one and b equals one, showing the function that we found using the technique of differencing is equivalent to the function we found by summing the generating functions in the previous lesson. So you may wanna pause the video and look at this in more detail, but the two generating functions are equivalent. I hope you found this helpful.